At first I thought it was a bot army, but then a longtime subscriber mentioned the Odin project and I was like, wait, what? You're not a bot too, are you? Whatever it is, people have been name dropping the Odin project on my videos for literally over three years. So what the heck is the Odin project and is it worth your time and energy as an aspiring developer? We're checking out the Odin Project's curriculum, features, community, pricing, and more coming up. Hey, RTC here. Listen, don't forget to get on our official mailing list. We have the free stuff, like free stuff. We have a free ebook for you. We have so many coding tips, real world insights, and so much more. Link popping up. It's also in the description box of this video. Your career in web development starts here. Boldly proclaims the OdinProject.com. Our full stack curriculum is free and supported by a passionate open source community. Right away, we're knocking out that pricing element. The Odin Project is totally free. Much like Free Code Camp, it is designed for newbies. It's free. The difference though, what is unique about this one is that they curate a large part of their curriculum. In other words, it's kind of like a museum for web developers. They pick out the curriculum, the best of the best, from the internet or what they believe to be the best of the best and give it to you to experience, interpret, and learn from. You can choose from two learning paths. Everyone must go through the foundations and then you can choose full stack Ruby on Rails or full stack JavaScript. The other thing I wanna point out right away is that even though the material is curated from various resources, most of the stuff is not video based. You're gonna be doing a ton of reading. Let's hop in to the foundations. You can see what this looks like. Overview, this is where it all begins. A hands-on introduction to all of the essential tools you'll need to build real working websites. You'll learn what web developers actually do, the foundations you'll need for later courses. So a thorough introduction here, prerequisites, Git basics, HTML foundations, CSS foundations, Flexbox, JS basics, the back end and conclusion. But let's pop in to the introduction and you can see kind of this layout, lots of reading again, no illustrations, no pretty code editors. This is for people who are comfortable reading, who absorb information reading and who don't mind clicking links. As I said earlier, this curriculum is largely curated. So when they want to explain things in depth, they will outsource it to a different site or a different application where you can continue your learning path. They also have a fairly large Discord community as well, where you can ask questions and get some help there. After you crank out those foundations, then you choose your learning path. Now in 2023 forward, I mean, this has been true for a few years now, Ruby on Rails just does not have the market share it used to have. It's not completely useless. I mean, Ruby on Rails is pretty awesome, but as far as practicality goes, as far as getting employed and having better chances of finding an employer, I would say full stack JavaScript. This is especially important because this is a time commitment that might take five months, six months, a year or more. If you're gonna be choosing something that takes that long, you probably want to have the odds in your favor when it comes to finding good prospects for employment. I'd also like to point out that App Academy, which is another free resource, it's basically the coding bootcamp curriculum online. I did a review on it. It's popping up if you wanna check that out. They rewrote the Ruby on Rails curriculum and now it's Python. Kind of just emphasizes how this is a little outdated. Again, this is from an employment perspective though. If you're just doing it for fun, feel free to take the Ruby on Rails, but we're gonna go check out this full stack JavaScript. It says this path takes you through our entire JavaScript curriculum. The courses should be taken in the order that they are displayed. You'll learn everything you need to know to create beautiful responsive websites from scratch using JavaScript and Node.js. The intermediate HTML and CSS course opens up with intermediate HTML concepts, intermediate CSS concepts, forms. Your first project is here for a sign up form. I would not say that these projects are necessarily worthy of a portfolio. However, they are good for testing your knowledge. I would say they're more like coding challenges. The instructions are very explicit along with some tips and what to do if you get stuck. Hopping in to JavaScript, going into the JavaScript section. Quite a few more projects here though. You're gonna be doing a library, tic-tac-toe, a restaurant page, a to-do app. It is cool to see these computer science challenges, linked lists and binary search trees. Not going overboard with it, like they're not like throwing leak code level questions at you. There's also a section on React. They talk about state and props, handle inputs and render lists, along with a few basic projects like a resume application, a memory card and a shopping cart. It would be nice to see some images of the final projects on here of what these things should look like just to conceptualize it. Like even now as an experienced developer, I wanna see something to break up all of this text. That is one of my biggest 
biggest critiques is that yes, all the information is here. Yes, further information is available through these links and these additional resources, but to not have any photos or illustrations or not one interactive coding editor or an embedded video somewhere anywhere, especially for a newbie, I can see how this could get really overwhelming. If you're determined to get through this course, you can absolutely do it and leverage these community resources like their Discord. The final section is on getting hired. I think this is a really beneficial section. All courses that are trying to get people to that employment level should have modules like this. Getting that resume going, getting that GitHub going, this is very helpful. But again, I would like to see some examples some illustrations, more than just text to give people some examples of what things should look like. Going deeper into the Free Code Camp comparison, for one thing, Free Code Camp offers more than just web development. They do QA, scientific computing, data analysis. I recently did a full Free Code Camp review video. If you want to check that out, it's popping up on your screen. Free Code Camp also has interactive code editors and their lessons are a little more bite sized. Whereas with the Odin project, get an energy drink because some of these lessons go on for quite some time and you're gonna be spending a lot of time, again, reading about it. Whereas with Free Code Camp, you're reading, but you're also doing. Free Code Camp also has a companion YouTube channel absolutely phenomenal YouTube channel, which may as well be its own separate learning platform. I would also like to see a time investment estimate. With a video course, the video runtime is stated right there. I would love to see how long they believe it will take the average developer or aspiring developer to complete this curriculum. Even just a ballpark figure, it might be somewhere buried in here, but I would like to see it more prominently displayed. All in all, I think the Odin project does have some really good elements about it. I do think for the average newbie though, that this curriculum can be a little too advanced. I think that it does rely too much on the written word. And in 2023, a lot of us just don't have this discipline to go through all of this. If you do have that discipline and you're really committed, I do recommend checking out this platform because there is a lot of great information. The projects are pretty straightforward and I do like how they really are explicit about what to do. It's also totally free. So that's also another big benefit. There are people out there who have commented on my YouTube channel over the years, how much they love the Odin project. Some people have been really obsessed about it. So I want to hear from you guys again, add to what I'm seeing here. Maybe I'm missing something. I just think for the average newbie, it might be a little too much. Maybe I'm underestimating people. Let me know what you guys think.